Welcome, we're going to be going over Blender 4.1 Alpha updates. These are going to be good and we're going to check them out. So go into Preferences, let's come on down to Key Map, and under Preferences, you want to turn on Pi Menu on Drag. Okay, this is a new thing and what we want to do is jump over here and we want to type in Keyframe. And when you do that, you'll see that we have all of the interface, the framing, the outliner, the dope sheet, so on and so on. You'll see a little bit of a pattern here. Alt I, I, drag I, K, and as you go on down, it just kind of recycles a bunch of times because these are the um, new key maps that we're gonna be using. So make sure you have a timeline out. I'm gonna hit shift left arrow so I can get that back over there. Now, for something like this mesh, I'm actually going to need to separate it by selection. So I've got one nice loose piece I can kind of play around with. And if you just hit I, anywhere in the 3D view, you'll notice that all this pops up over here. Okay, so this is going to just automatically add a location rotation scale. Now, if you want to get rid of that, all you have to do is hit Alt-I and it's going to delete all of those keyframes, which is actually pretty handy. And then if you hit K, you'll get all of the other insert keyframe menu, and that can be useful to you as well. So let's go ahead, and I'll just show you the Pi menu first. So if we I swipe, and it's kind of like moving the mouse when you hit I, so it's a little tricky to do, but you can get it. So I will go ahead and add a rotation to this, on frame one, come out to frame 250. Oh, maybe it's gonna be a little bit slow. I'll go out to 120. I just wanna rotate this on the Z at something like 360, and that'll be good. And then I can I swipe up again and insert another rotation, Shift L, go back, and there we go. So that's pretty good. It's kind of intuitive. It's a little easier to work with in a sense. And so that'll be a better way, I think, of actually adding in your keyframes. And if I didn't mention it, uh, what you can do is you can come over here and you can hover over this and shift I and just delete those out without having to come down here and kind of fool around in the timeline, which I think is a big hassle having to come down and just get the mouse just right in the timeline and then hold delete or delete all of them just makes life a little bit easier. All right, and one of the next things that I'm going to cover is going to be the auto smooth. This is very important. If you're doing hard surface modeling, it's one of those things you want to know. The mesh auto smooth option has been replaced by a modifier node group. You guys, you check this link out. I'll put it in the description, but let's jump over to Blender and take a look. Where is this thing? So. If I come over and I try to run a bevel right here, and here's a cool bevel trick if you didn't know this, hit Control B to bevel. If you tap S, you can increase or decrease your um, segments. Pretty neat. And you have a list of little doodads that come up at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so that's fine. So if you were to shade auto smooth now, I mean, that looks kind of like garbage. So let's do a new geometry node group and let's look at normals and smooth by angle and if we drop that in you can ignore sharpness and get that nice auto smooth setup so that means i'm going to have to update some of my add-ons because the uh, auto smooth button isn't going to work anymore you're gonna to have to add in this node group and uh, then you can kind of change how this looks of course and then you can tap in and see how this is written that's pretty decent you can do all this in geometry nodes and that is the general idea of the modifiers uh, so now you can go in and you know generate some modifiers that at some point are all going to be either backed by or otherwise converted to geometry nodes so that'd be a good thing to know if you uh, are having trouble shading something smooth that's going to be one big reason why and call me crazy but if you come back down here to the vertex group See, I don't even see that auto smooth option anymore. Let's pull up Blender 3.6 and look. All right, we're over here in the 
Right, Blender 3.6, and let's check this out. And throw in our favorite default cube. Let's run a bevel on that bad boy. And there we go. Just increase the segments there. And you can hit that in Shade Auto Smooth. Looks good. And if you come down to the Vertex Group, Normals, Auto Smooth is there. And then you can change how that is, I suppose, if it's not going to work on this for some reason. Whatever. There we go. Yeah, so that's the behavior. That button, that feature is gone out of 4.1 and moving forward so that's forward compatibility issues going on and a bunch of add-ons so there you go we do not have that here the normal setup is not here now i don't have a setup for this but we now have an active camera input this is designed to go into an object info node and obtain the transform so when you have multiple things going on in your timeline and I'll just jump over real quick so you guys can see um, this typical usage would be to connect the node to an object info node to obtain its transform this works as expected when the camera's transform is animated and there are markers on the timeline to change the active camera all right so GIF support has been added for blender 4.1 I've got blender 3.6 on the right 4.1 on the left so we'll, we'll do a little drag and drop operation here i've got a gif or two we can throw in and just want to throw this into the 3.6 and then run across and you just get this little dot in the middle i don't know if there's a way you can enable that per se somewhere else but i've not seen it and i don't really mess around with the video editor too much i do a lot of add-on writing and geometry nodes so if we drop it over here, uh, it doesn't come up with that yellow image stuff on it. It comes up with the movie texture behind it. So if you come over here, you'll actually be able to see that it actually plays. So let's drop in something else here. And there you go. We can hit play on that. And that works nice. I like that. So that's another option now. You can just drag and drop those right into the video editor. Very nice. Moving on to the next thing. All right, now my screen's a little different because I had to go troubleshoot something. Um, I was using, I was trying to get used nodes to work with the lights so I could go over the new IES um, compatibility for Blender 4.1 and then I noticed the use nodes button was not there. So I went and installed uh, Lightmagic Studio 7 which directly writes the Python code for the used nodes so apparently it's still there and it popped up when that happened so if you guys don't see it in one of the experimental builds whatever maybe somebody files a uh, a commit on that or a complaint or whatever uh, but it does apparently work so <laughs> i was just gonna see how the ies lighting actually looked and i was testing out my gobos so uh it's good to know though you know i'm gonna throw in a timeline real quick it's good to know that my animated gobos still work in Blender 4.1 experimental because I have not tried it in the 4.1. There's really no reason, but it does work. That's cool. So if you haven't picked up the Lightmagic Studio, go grab that. It will automatically uh, throw in custom shaders. It will have Eevee Bloom. So if you wanted to use Bloom, because Eevee's going to like not be around it's not coming yet and so maybe you don't need it but it's still there uh, i've got compositor settings for that uh, there's light selection there's a ring light you've got all of the black body intensities plus some preset studios uh, the ring light is geometry nodes based lighting which is just a basically a ring light and i'm hitting the wrong button here or something's going crazy Oh, I don't, <laughs> don't have Mesh Machine installed, so that's messing me up. There we go. And so you've got a Geometry Nodes uh, based setup here for the light and the resolution. And yeah, you can change a few things. Kind of make this uh, brighten up your scene. The ring lights are pretty cool, actually, because you can have it outside of the scene and really mess with the fall off, which I think is really cool. 
So with all of that being said, let's click use nodes here and find my nodes. And what I want to do is load in an IS texture. So we'll just pull this out and we'll grab the IS and plug that in. Now it's not projecting anything at the moment, but we'll go ahead and grab an external IES file. I just happen to have a truckload of these. So let's pull one out. Jellyfish. Okay. All kind of stuff in here. Let's, uh, let's go to the pair. Oop, that was not the IES file. Let's try that one more time. It doesn't matter what it is. Let's grab an IES. And now the IS lighting that will actually control where the light goes with code, which is pretty cool. And it's supposed to be more compatible now as it was apparently breaking, I suppose. So I honestly don't know how bad it was because I don't really use IS lights a whole lot. So let's play around with one more and find something that is focus there we go see these are really beautiful so i gotta put the is pack back into the light magic studio i know you guys need that kind of stuff so i'll be working on that this week hope to have that back on by the weekend and maybe even by tonight uh, but i will say that i think this looks a little better than it did and then pull one of these uh, models out doesn't matter what it is and what I can do is I can just kind of bring this bad boy around and it's going to snap onto the uh, local part of the mesh here for us. And if you scale it down, it's just going to work a little better inside the bounds of wherever you have it, obviously. And this is a cool add on. It's got quite a few features. It's got some modeling, uh, mirror modeling features, which I think are actually going to prove to be quite useful for you has some preset constraints that uh, will make this uh, work out for mirror modeling. And so if you were to say select your object, you do have some transform options here. You could say apply the mirror, delete it, do a dump number of different things. If I just applied this, it actually uh, separates these by loose parts. It's no longer a mirror and then it will create an object origin to geometry on all objects it does. And for loose parts, it just sets them as loose parts. So then you can remove the empty at the end. Anyways, back to what we were doing here. So the idea behind this in just geometry nodes is just amazing. I love geometry nodes. And I don't get a chance to play with these hardly anymore because I'm doing all the Python stuff. But uh, what you can do now is you now have a menu switch. okay? And this menu switch will have... A bunch of the well all of the original st things in here like your floats your integers your booleans vectors and so on and uh, the cool thing is that you do this by outputting it if you will and let's just say i want to have this geometry plugged in which is the original and maybe a uv sphere or something like that i know the use case for this is going to be far more uh, complex but this will just give you an idea then i can output my menu switch and over here i'll get a couple things and pablo <laughs> actually mentioned during his um blender today which those things are going to end i think he said they're going to end by the way in which case i'm going to kind of pick up and do as many updates as i can you know because i think the community really needs it you know there's people out there that know the other aspects of blender that that I don't use and that other people don't use and they'll they can chime in I'm sure a lot of people are going to chime in and help out but uh, just just kind of sad so now comes with a couple menu options because you need it just to kind of come up that way and so you can come over here to the node area and you can add more items to this whatever you see fit and like I say it could be geometry floats anything that you can conceptualize so now you're building out a UI over here, which is going to be pretty neat. So if I switch to item B, it's just going to switch my mesh because that's the logic that I have right now. I could put in some other things, but this is basically where it's at. And so that menu switch can be stacked, I'm sure, and a bunch of other options. So I think that's pretty darn cool, and I can't wait to see what everybody comes up with. I'll probably now the next updates a little bit more of a 
hidden one, but I think could be useful. And there are some guys out there that have got some add-ons that are based on the outliner. And it's pretty cool. So go in, let's throw on a modifier. doesn't matter what type. Kind of clean this up a little bit because I don't think I can throw a bevel onto something and have it look like trash. And now you're supposed to have modifier access up here. So if we drop down bevel, we can either apply or delete from here. This is going to be interesting because now you can add, you know, you can have your uh, end panel thing kind of control and maybe show some outliner properties while you're doing that. And that's cool. So then you can go in or you could delete it, whatever you want to do. And if there happens to be a material on this thing and 4.1 is locking up, that's great. Then you can go to the material right click technically, obviously, and unlink or delete that as well. And that may have been a standard feature before, but this one is new. So you weren't able to do that before. Now you can apply from here. So if you have your tree open, it's going to make sense for you. I'm kind of playing around with this next update. Uh, this one's going to be in sculpting. Okay, so you will have individual brush settings now for the view normal and the area normal. So this is set to 90 and 20% for this one. And if I switch over to say my grab brush and I'll grab this one, pun intended, and I'll go ahead and check this out for the view and area normals. I'll put this one to like 50 and I'll put the limit to 0.1 for the fall off. And now I'm going to switch back over to the brush that I just had and was using. And this one's still at 90 and 0.25. So switch back to the grab and see how that's looking. Yeah, so you can individually change the limit and fall off for each brush. You don't have to do global settings anymore, which is nice. It's a big hassle to have uh, those settings globally for like you have to adjust each brush each time. That makes absolutely no sense. So there you go. There's another really constructive and good update. All right, really appreciate everybody watching and sticking around. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial lesson.